it kind of schools are it really doesn't seem like they want to identify. Oh yeah, as much. no, I mean that's a big. Um, yeah, that right now there's a there's a big uh, big fight mm -hmm. going on with because the uh, there's a new diagnostic and statistical manual DSM the fifth version that's coming out and how they're going to handle dyslexia in that is okay. there's a listserv I belong to and the whole thing has exploded in people carrying on about how they're not including dyslexia and they never really did. They yeah. had a specific reading disorder. Yeah. I don't know. It's very complicated. Um, and uh, so I, <clears throat> um, it's not that hard to identify the nature of it and to figure out what to do. It really isn't. But unfortunately, um, there, uh, special education teachers are not necessarily, I mean, they should be, but they're not necessarily real knowledgeable about the nature of dyslexia or what to do about it. Right. You know, so, um, yes. Back to you, you're talking about the DSM. So is it that dyslexia is presently not in the DSM or will become so? Is, is that what you're expecting? Uh, the term dyslexia is really not used in the DSM. It's like executive functioning or something? Uh, they, well, uh, in the current DSM, there's a, there, you can have um, a uh, specific reading disorder, a, a disorder of written language, which would include spelling and, uh, you know, other things. Um, and there's also, uh, you know, also a disorder of speech, a speech and language disorder, which would be, you know, requiring speech therapy and so on. Um, and so those diagnoses are possible. The new one, I mean, there's going to be reading, reading disorders identified. The problem is, quite honestly, is that reading is a very complicated thing. And students have a lot of issues, problems with a number of things, not just decoding and phonics, but oftentimes very slow rates of reading, which, you know, when people think, well, he can read a word list, so why can't he read? You know, why is he so slow? Well, dyslexia affects speed of processing language, definitely, and so there can be issues with not necessarily reading individual words, but reading connected text that really impacts a student's ability to comprehend. Um, and, you know, so, so really reading, the whole field of reading and spelling needs its own DSM, in my opinion. You know, it's not a psychiatric disorder. I mean, it's just kind of odd to me that Brain it's even included, yeah. you know, know. That it's even yeah. included in exactly. something like that. I just, but the benefit wouldn't be the whole insurance coverage piece, though, by being included in the Yeah, the insurance coverage piece is a big part of that, and also the fact but that educators can't agree on, uh, on, on uh, you know, what constitutes mm -hmm. dyslexia. I mean, you know, it's, I, I've been in the field a long time, and I have to tell you that there are a lot of reading teachers who are kind of crazy, you know, except for me. <laughs> um, anyway, so, and again, this speaks to what we've just been talking about, you know, if you suspect a child has dyslexia or any learning difficulty, having a psychoeducational assessment is really important. You know, if you have it privately, um, you, you get a lot with somebody who can really explain things to you and recommend good interventions. You know, that's not necessarily part of a public school record and students can choose to disclose or not, you know, um, that. But there, without a psychoeducational assessment, somebody like me, um, you know, <clears throat> if people come and say, well, I'm, you know, I, he might have dyslexia, but we've never had him tested. It's like, well, I, I can't tell you what to do unless I see some, you know, some evidence. So I can look and see some nature, you know, and, and they can assess diagnostically what's going on and so on and so forth. So, you're schooling, you know, there are private schools like ours, 
who um, who work, you know, with who educate children. Um, there's a public school system. There's a host of competent teachers who can provide one-on-one -on -one instruction, and so there are a number of levels. But one of the, for sure, one of the things that you want to do if you're a parent is to really make sure, is to understand what the tutor or the school or the, you know, the special education team or whatever, what are they doing and is it, do they have the necessary training and is the program that they're using um, a scientifically based intervention. That's really key. Um, because, you know, there are organizations out there that will promise you the moon, charge you a lot of money, and there will, you know, and have kids, you know, running around chasing balls and things. And that's not a proper intervention for dyslexia or really anything, actually. So, um, you know, you, you, they'll claim research-based. You really have to explore that carefully. Um, what a thorough psychoeducational assessment includes would be a cognitive potential, which would be an IQ test. Um, and then there should be some achievement testing as well. Um, such as how well does the student decode words? That's word attack. How fluent is the student? In other words, what's the student's rate of reading? Is it, you know, because slow reading is a distinct problem even if there's not problems with decoding. Comprehension. Uh, many times what I see over and over again is in children who are dyslexic, what you'll often see is a comprehension score that's higher than their word attack. In other words, they're getting the most they possibly can out of what they can read. So they've clearly got the cognitive ability to read and understand much higher than they're probably able to decode. It's the decoding that's, and, and the slow processing that's holding them back. That is, uh, that's a kind of a classic dyslexic profile and so that an intervention that uh, at the word level, uh, you know, so the to uh, teach <coughs> uh, to teach the structure of the language carefully would then help that. That con oftentimes, with even a small amount of improvement in word attack, comprehension goes, you know, way up because they get. It's very hard to understand <coughs> stuff that you can't read. It reminds me of when I took French in college and we had to read Madame Bovary, um, which is a French classic, and in French, of course. And, you know, it was like I'd get two words and then not another one, and then I'd have to look at, you know, it's just, you can't, uh, unless you're really fluent with uh, the reading and vocabulary, it's very difficult to get everything out of a reading to do any kind of deep reading, which is what students need to do as they go on in school. The spelling is a very key, uh, very important measure. Uh, written expression is important. There, It's kind of hard to get a standardized score, a reliable one on written expression. Um, but um, And then if there are speech and language uh, problems that are indicated, then there's a whole other battery of speech and language testing. And math is also um, good to, important to look at. And there are, there are diagnostic math tests that are one-on-one -on -one too. Um, but lots of good instruments for reading and spelling. Um, <clears throat> so, the foundational knowledge that everybody needs, all of us need, uh, but what we do when we begin an intervention with a student with dyslexia is, first of all, we start with the sounds, phonemic awareness. Um, we need to teach them how to sequence, segment, and blend speech sounds, manipulate them. And that's a primary, uh, primary building block. So, the word cat has three sounds, so 
we begin to teach them k, the cat. What are the sounds? K, a, t. So we segment the sounds and then we also build them up. So we use sound cards where every sound is every letter sound is represented on the card. And I will ask the student, 